Hello steam enthusiast, St. Paul Steam here. Got a little closer to having my Walesco D310 Foden Mighty Atom lorry, steam lorry done uh, with the modifications I wanted to get done to it. And uh, we'll start here. This might run a little long, so I'm going to try to hustle it up. Uh, we've got the front uh, emblazoned in gold. Touch that up. One thing I found out when I was running it, this chimney tended to fall off all the time. So I uh, made a uh, nice brass bezel for it at the bottom, and it fits in there just like a glove. So that's, and then I uh, actually lapped it with lapping compounds so it would fit really tight, because that would fall off on the runs all the time. But you're going to see a lot of modifications on this unit. And I'll start with, uh, well, there's the obvious one right there. I've added a boiler on the rear. That's its load now. Uh, I'll tell you everything I can remember. This roof on actual runs tended to slide and fall off, so I put some locating tabs on it right there just to keep it in place. You're going to see that I added a gas burner for it right back there. And uh, I think it's number 26 from uh, Forest Classics. Goes right up under there. And uh, you can see it's clamped and held in the place right there. Get back to that a little more in depth here a little bit. Uh, but this is a Jensen 60 boiler. And there's a uh, pressure gauge up there. Safety valve. And I've also got a safety valve there on the tank. So the uh, original boiler acts like a condenser now. And there's my uh, throttle. And it's ducked right in there to the uh, boiler through a number 5M uh, fitting that's been turned down into. You can see I've got a uh, fake governor on there right now and uh, it runs through two roller ball bearings and a number four uh, metric plug and that's just a plug in the boiler and all that was was a hold down screw for that plate so I replaced that and now we've got a at least we've got something that looks like a governor there. And uh, one of the more important things I did, every shaft in this, except for the front axle, they're okay. But every shaft in this, the uh, drive axle, the jack shaft, and the uh, main shaft, drive shaft back there, all have roller ball bearings in them now. I drilled out and removed the uh, lugs that were in there and replaced them with uh, sealed roller ball bearings. And as you can see, I also took off the belt. Uh, these units are very prone to slippage. They can barely pull themselves because of the slippage. So I added chain drive to it. And uh, I was able to get sprockets pretty much the size I needed. These came from Servo City. And uh, you can see transfer up there. There's also again sealed ball bearings there. And on the other side, I don't know if I can get that. Uh, going to the axle back here. See the burner better there. Sealed ball bearing there. And then uh, one thing I did, it hasn't come into play where I really needed to do it, but these axle caps right here, they're threaded in. And uh, this one's tight. I always leave that one tight so it can drive that wheel. But I can also tighten this up to make it uh, positive traction so both tires turn. Now it's not going to turn worth a darn once I do that. Never never really had an issue where it's I've needed to tighten this one up. Mostly I just leave it free spinning. But I can. And there again we have the Walesco 60 boiler. It's on an aluminum frame with a copper sides. And then I uh, insulated it inside with a fireproof, uh, pretty thin walled uh, lining, so it keeps the heat, helps to keep the heat in the firebox a lot better, and I was worried about these plastic gears maybe getting too hot, but it's not been an issue, um, and there's the, uh, the other jack shaft with a knurled knob on it, I thought about putting double drives on it, but sprockets on here, but that would just be, uh, for looks mainly, it wouldn't do a whole lot more than needs to be done now. 
Uh, you can see that I've stretched the frame out exactly an inch and a half. Mainly that was due to the burner length. I just couldn't shorten it up any. But now I can see what the boiler is doing. I can see it in full run. And uh, I can get 10, 12 minutes out of it at least. And one of the other things I've done is uh, I've got a switch right here. And uh, let me put this down. We have a uh, remote control here. And I've got remote control steering. So uh, this can really run around the driveway, as you'll see in another video, and do some heavy-duty service, which is what I wanted for my shows. It has to be able to run and uh, do pretty good work. And you might ask, well, what's that little uh, cable tie doing for that nut for the uh, gas tank? Well, turns out every time I took that little nut off to fill that gas tank, that little nut would work its way all the way down to the base there and be a bear to get out. So I put that cable tie there just to keep it from uh, going too far down into the base of this thing. I think I've covered most everything. Hopefully I have. I've done a lot to it and probably forgot some things. But hope you enjoyed this video. And... Uh, Again, it's all chain drive now. There are There is no slippage. I thought about putting a clutch in it, but I'm just not uh, that clever. So I haven't done that yet. Might build a wood bed for it. Might not. But anyway, this video is getting long enough as it is, so thanks for looking, folks. And uh, I appreciate it. Bye.